All right, I'm gonna close that and now we can look at the actual communication. So we know that we were resolving names to uh, IP addresses. So we can see here DNS queries that were happening. If I wanna isolate my DNS queries, I can type DNS here and hit enter. And I can see all of the DNS queries and how they were resolved. And then I can scroll down and see some of these DNS resolutions that were happening. So if we, if I scroll down, I can see that there was a request from 192.168.8.8 .8 on packet 1556 to open DNS. And the query was for the address, the A record for dalbergetti.com. So if I wanna go to my website at dalbergetti.com, then I need the IP address associated with my website. And you can see at line 1557, the resolution of that to the address. Now to, to, to actually see that address as it resolved, then you go down here to the details window and we decide what do we want to look at. Do we want to look at information about the ethernet frame at layer two and then um, information about the frame at layer two and then the specific type of frame, which is an ethernet frame, or do we want to see the information about the on the internet layer about IPv4? Do we want this IPv4 information? Do we want the UDP information? Since this is a DNS server, it, it works on port 53. And you can see here source, this is coming from port 53. So this is from a DNS server on port 53. So do I want that information at the transport layer? Or do I want the application layer information, the DNS information? And this is a DNS response. So at the application layer, we're talking about DNS. And we can see here the query, which was for dalbergetti.com, we want an A record. And then the answer, which was, this name is an A record and is resolves to address 35.208.0.58. So there we have it. So we can drill down and then see the protocol at work. I can see the fields of the DNS uh, protocol, um, the DNS, in this case, response. I can see the fields of the user datagram protocol, which are most importantly, the source port and destination port. And I can see other things in there as well. I can see the information at the IP protocol, the source and the destination IP addresses. So there's the source address and the destination address. And I can also see at the ethernet layer, who was talking, who was actually handling off these ethernet frames from one wireless NIC to another. And it was my Meraki wireless router sending it from its wireless interface to my wireless interface on my computer from this MAC address to this MAC address. So all layers of the, of the network architecture are being observed. Now let's look at another one. If we look at HTTP, we can see here the HTTP protocol communications. And we can see right here that it was a communication from 192.168.8.8 to my website and I was getting my website, and then we can see the response right here. So here's the request, the get HTTP 1.1, and here's the response, HTTP 1.1 200 OK. So this 200 code says that it was a successful request, for, and this is a successful reply. And we can see what's the line, there is the home page, and I can even see the text, the HTML, from my home page. And in this home page, there was an image called netlab-labeled-pod1.jpg. So there was an image. So we can see here on the next, on the next frame, on 1566, there is a request from my computer, 192.168.8, to my website requesting that image. And then on the next frame, a reply from my web host to my computer and there's the reply, which is a 200 OK code, and there's the JPEG image. So here, if we look at it in the details window, once again, we can see all of the layers of um, the TCP IP protocol suite, the layers happening here. We can see the Ethernet frame, the IP packet, the TCP segment, 
with its addressing, the port addresses. And then we can see well, the reassembled segments. So notice that this image, this uh, JPEG image, is a reassembling of all of these segments. So this happened across multiple segments. And HTTP protocol, notice that we got the OK message. And then also the JPEG. And this is the JPEG information right here. Now, if I want to put together the image that I got from this exchange, all I have to do here is right click and say export packet bytes. And I can export the raw data and I can put it in this PCAP folder and I'll just say image.jpg because I know it's a JPEG and I'll hit save. And now if I go to that folder, there's the image. And I'll just open that image up and there it is. That was the image from the web page. Okay, the next thing that I did was is I went and I used FTP. So let's look at FTP. So if I look at the FTP communications, you can see there's FTP, but there's also, notice when I start putting in FTP here, there's FTP and there's also FTP-data. So what I could do is I could put an operator in here in my display filter here and I could say show me FTTP or using the double pipe FTP-data. So I'll put in show me FTP or FTP data. And now I can see the FTP protocol packets or frames, but also the FTP data. And this is interesting because I decided on purpose to use the FTP protocol, which is not secure. And we're gonna see how it's not secure here in a second. So I'll pull this over here so we can see a little more info here. And at just looking through the different FTP packets here and kind of just scrolling through them, we can see here that when we connected from my computer to dalbergetti.com using FTP, and we're gonna look at for the password here. So I'll scroll down and you can see here, up oh, there it is. This is it right here. So from my computer to dalbergetti.com request for user the user was student at dalbergetti.com. The response, password required, and we can open this up here under FTP in the details window, and you can see exactly what the response was. Response code, username okay, need password. Password required. And then in the next packet, there's the password. From my computer to my server, you can see I put in this password right here, and then the response, you can see user logged in. So you can see right here that with FTP, I can see not only the username, but the password that was used to log into the FTP server on the internet. Now, how can I see this? Well, because FTP is not encrypted, it's not secure, it's not a secure channel or secure, secure communication or secure protocol, and so you can see the information. Then, once I was FTP'd into the server, you can, say, you can see that we looked at the directory and you can see here print working directory was the request automatically to see the, the directory. And then we can see, actually let's see here, the file. Let's see if we can see the file. So the file was file1.txt. That's what I requested from my computer. I downloaded the file and here's the response. And you can see file transfer protocol file status, let's keep going, file1.txt. Um, let's see here, we're, we're trying to find the file here. Retrieve the file, request the file. All right, accepted the data. File successfully transferred, FTP data, and there it is. So if we look right here, you can see here under FTP-data, the data for the file, file1.txt, and in that file was, I just typed a few words, just some text. So that was the text in the file. So not only could we see the username and the password, but when I downloaded the text file from the FTP server, you can see that Wireshark can also see the text right in the file as well. So there's the FTP communication. All right, then the other thing that I did was, is we did a Telnet connection. So I can go up here, 
to the display filter and I could say filter for the Telnet protocol. Hit enter and then there it is. Towel.blinkandlights.nl from my computer at 192.168.8 to this using Telnet. Notice how Wireshark sees the network architecture, the communication protocols at work, the Ethernet frame, the IP packet, IPv4, TCP, Telnet uses TCP as the transport protocol, and Telnet application. So here is the Telnet application information. Now what's really interesting about this is we can see all of the text being transferred in the Telnet packet. So if we look down here, here is the animation going across the network. You can see right there the Telnet data. Let's, let's see if we can right here. So once again, I'm just scrolling through all of the Telnet packets and you can see the the ASCII text art being sent across. Tel 20th century text and it is Star Wars. So then we you can see that there is the there is the planet. And here comes the ship. And there's and there's C3PO and R2D2. So all of that data that was being sent across the Telnet connection is visible right here under the application Telnet and it's just text in, in clear text. So Telnet is another pro protocol that we don't use um, to connect to devices over the internet because Telnet's not secure. It's notoriously insecure. It's one of the oldest protocols on the internet. Um, but in this case, it's pretty fun just because we got to see this little ASCII text animation. So I hope this is uh, helps you to, as an introduction into using Wireshark and examining the protocols that you're seeing when you do a capture from your computer and as you're communicating on the network, you do it. I just challenge you to do a, a 10 second capture or do a, a one minute capture, visit some websites and then observe all the protocols that are happening, all the communications that are happening between your computer and devices, not only on the internet like websites and web servers, but also all the communications happening locally um, between devices on your home network, um, the type of protocols that are being used, things that you don't even realize your computer is doing that are talking, talking to other devices on the local network, multicasting, broadcasting, um, you know, name service, uh, resolving names, resolving addresses, you name it. Your computer is doing it. There's a lot of communications going on. And sometimes you might find that there's communications that you don't want to be happening that your computer is doing because you've picked up a virus or you've picked up some malware or your computer is phoning home to some server that you didn't want it to be doing, um, sending um, spying on you per se, and then sending that information out to servers that are on the internet that collect data about your habits or information that your computer is generating. All right. Well, thanks a lot. And uh, hopefully you'll get to do some more videos on Wireshark soon.